Hi, Janelle here, and today I'm going to make a, a tincture with lobelia. This is great blue syphilitica lobelia, and um, it is growing and blooming right now out by the creek on our property. This was the first year that I found any on our property, and I was so excited. Um, one nice thing about not cutting or weed whacking down all of your plant life or spraying for weeds is that you have many species that will seed and plant themselves on your property as the years go by if you let it kind of just come up naturally. So I have bone set by my creek and jewel weed and I have mint that <laughs> somehow seeded itself and I have um, the lobelia, I have cardinal flower, I have um, ragweed and goldenrod. So the, the creek beds can be an amazing place to find plants. And um, I also wanted to just preface this lesson here by saying that I'm an herbalist and I have studied or done the training program with the School of Natural Healing, Dr. Christopher kind of method. And also I would say Rosemary Gladstar has been a huge herbal influence in my life and I have um, been doing her courses. And uh, I have been studying and reading for 20 years. And um, I, I read a quote, I think Rosemary Gladstar wrote it in one of her books or in her literature. She said, an herbalist is someone who works with plants and uses plants, but a master herbalist is someone who does it for a much longer period of time, something to that effect. So when I first learned about plants or herbs, I was only working with the dried variety. I worked at a, an herb shop and they had um, jars of dried herbs. And uh, although I did gardening, I was not familiar with the plants as they grew. And uh, I feel like the Dr. Christopher teachings uh, kind of lend itself more to formulas and the dried plant. I did do some study with gardening and organic farming and plant identification, but what I love so much about Rosemary Gladstar is she teaches so much about just like observing and being with plants in nature and learning them like the actual plant, the real life thing. And so that has opened up a whole new world of herbalism for me, working with the plants. So I also like to say that each herbalist I feel is different as each plant is different and each soil and area where the plants grow. I have plant species in one section of my yard that look totally different than in another section just because of the sunlight, the water, the soil, and uh, all, all herbalists are kind of like that. We're all different and I don't wanna be a cookie cutter herbalist or healer. And uh, I don't want herbalism to be standardized so that it is cookie cutter. So I just ask you to kind of like, if you are new to herbs to kind of suspend your preconceptions of needing things to be in a standardized scientific cookie cutter kind of method because for me herb studying herbs and using herbs and living with the plants is um, a very natural artistic fluid process and it isn't something that is um, strictly scientific and Many people want to make it that way, but I don't. So anyway, that's just my um, my little spiel there. So what I have is the, the great blue lobelia. And then in this bowl, I have some that I picked like maybe two days ago. So I want to make a vinegar tincture, an apple cider vinegar tincture with the lobelia. And you can... Um, well, I don't ever really make tinctures with the fresh herb. I let it wilt first or have it totally dry. So this has been wilted, like I said, for two days. And I did cut it. 
so that it will fit in my jar. So I'm gonna just move this jar over here. I am only using a smaller um, pint jar rather than a, a real large one just for uh, video purposes. But so I have my herb cut and I'm just going to press it into my jar here. And I have, if I really press this down, it would probably be about halfway with the herb. And to be honest, I, I do want to have a little bit more than this. And what I'm going to do is uh, when this wilts, I'll add some more herb and press it into the jar. But for this video, I'm just gonna go with what I have. So you're gonna fill your herb um, a little bit more than halfway. And you do want to tamp it down a little bit as you're working. And then for this particular tincture, and I'm calling it a tincture, although tinctures are often made with alcohol, uh, I am using apple cider vinegar. And I, I love apple cider vinegar tinctures because apple cider vinegar is a food in and of itself where alcohol is um, not really, I wouldn't consider it a food unless you have something fermented in the ancient way of fermenting alcohol. Uh, but regular vodka that I would use for a resinous kind of plant material, if I was going to make a tincture that was a, a real hard root, like dandelion root or burdock root, um, myrrh gum, I would use the alcohol as my menstruum for my tincture. But when you have something that is more leafy, flower, flowery, um, I guess containing more water. Apple cider vinegar is a perfect menstruum and it tastes good and it's, it is also a food with uh, enzymes and, and some my, minerals and vitamins that can be uh, of benefit as well. So I have, um, I actually, I'm gonna use this uh, Bragg's vinegar. I do get the vinegar with the mother I do not use the um, pasteurized vinegar that has nothing live in it. So when you make your vinegar tincture, it will have like some of the mother even like grow and continue to grow in your tincture, but that is okay. So my herb is in the jar and then I'm just pouring my apple cider vinegar in and I do not add water to mine at all. I don't know, some people may do that. I'm just going to fill this up and leave some headspace. And you can see that I do have more room here where I could put in some more herb and I'm going to do that. Um, the herb will swell. So then I'm gonna put my lid on kind of tightly. I have a little bit of a sunlight glare here. I don't know if that's better. I'm gonna move this over here. Oops. So that's it. I mean, it's very simple. Uh, the last thing I wanna do though is label this where I put the date, today's date. I am putting what it is, the herb, the scientific name. I am also putting the location, so I, I will write where I am, my address as to where I was picked the plant because oftentimes I get plants from all over. And um, the, so I said the date and then the menstruum, so apple cider vinegar, which would be easy to figure out if I open the jar. So this will then go on a, a windowsill, a counter area and stay in the sun for a few weeks. I, it's typically two, but if it's more, that's fine, you can definitely let it sit for more. The sun will be you know, coming in the window and shining in on your herbs as they're macerating or tincturing into the, the liquid, and that is good. You want that to happen. And it doesn't ruin the tincture. In fact, it actually aids the process. But when you're finished and you have strained the liquid off into another jar and usually use like an amber colored jar to protect 
the medicine now, you're going to want to put that in a shady plate, a shady or like um, dark cabinet or dark cupboard or something, and you no longer want the sun to reach your tincture or your herbs because it will then break that down. So once you have made the tincture with the apple cider vinegar, this lasts, I have had them last two years, but they probably would have a longer shelf life. I think I just always wind up using them within the two year period. And I have read of people having them much longer than two years, especially if you store them properly. So um, I guess if you have any interesting comments of making apple cider vinegar tinctures down below, that would be great to have um, that shared. And uh, Keep your comments positive, like this video, and subscribe. Thanks.